I wanted to discuss a type of contract known as a swap. Now, swap is an agreement between two parties to exchange a series of cash flows over a period of time. The frequency of the exchange and the size of the cash flows are contract specific. So these are going to be privately negotiated between two parties, perhaps with a financial intermediary coming in between. The principle that the cash flow is based on is known as the notional principle. And the reason we use that term is the principle generally isn't exchanged. It's simply the cash flows. Now, there are a number of different types of swaps. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus on an interest rate swap. Now, in an interest rate swap, two parties will exchange cash flows based on interest rates. For example, swapping a fixed rate for a floating rate or vice versa. Now, why would institutions be interested in a swap agreement? Well, for example, banks tend to have a mismatch between the duration of their assets and their liabilities. Long-term loans are funded by short-term deposits. If rates rise, banks will be paying depositors more, but will be locked into the rate that their loans generate. A swap allows the bank to convert some of its long-term fixed rate loans into a floating rate, okay, thus reducing some of the interest rate risk. Let's take a look at an example. Okay, it might be clearer if we look at some uh, numerical example of what, what's referred to as a plain vanilla interest rate swap. So this is sort of the simplest example you can get. Let's consider uh, two borrowers, AAA and BBB. For short-term borrowing, triple B borrows from a bank at LIBOR plus a half a percent. LIBOR is a floating interest rate, stands for London Interbank Offer Rate, and they're paying LIBOR plus a half a percent. Triple A borrows at LIBOR plus a quarter percent. For long-term borrowing, triple B would pay the fixed rate of 13 percent, triple A would pay a fixed rate of 12 percent. So, for example, say AAA would like to convert $10 million of its fixed rate debt to a floating rate. And let's also assume that BBB would like to convert $10 million of its floating rate debt to a fixed rate. Is there an opportunity for the two firms to benefit from a swap? In the example, AAA has an absolute advantage borrowing in both the short-term and the long-term markets. Right? They borrow long-term at 12%, where BBB borrows at 13%. In the short-term market, AAA borrows at LIBOR plus a quarter percent. BBB borrows at LIBOR plus a half a percent. The real question here is, does AAA have a bigger advantage in one of the markets? Turns out that AAA has what's referred to as a comparative advantage in long-term borrowing. You may be familiar with that term from international trade. It's the idea that while one person or one institution or one country may be better at both, they have a bigger advantage in something else. In this case, AAA has a 1% advantage in long-term borrowing and only a quarter percent advantage in short-term borrowing. So they have a comparative advantage borrowing in the long-term fixed rate market. All right, suppose BBB is interested in a long-term loan and AAA is interested in the short-term borrowing. With the swap, without the swap, BBB pays 13%, AAA pays LIBOR plus a quarter percent. So the question is, can the two of them do better if they engage in a swap. Now, in the example I'm about to show, we're going to toss in a commercial bank um, or an investment bank to arrange the swap or broker the deal. So here are the terms of the swap. Triple A issues seven-year notes at 12%, let's say based on that $10 million of notional principal, and that $10 million is never going to be exchanged. Um, triple, so what happens? They issue these notes, so they're borrowing at 12%. The bank agrees to pay AAA the 12% coupon. Okay, so essentially, the bank is paying AAA's interest on the bonds. B pays the bank 
for example, 12 and a quarter percent for a fixed rate loan. Triple B raises its money um, in the short term market at a rate of LIBOR plus a half a percent. So let's look at this diagram here, right? A is raising their money by issuing bonds at a fixed rate of 12 percent. B is raising its share of the money at a floating rate of LIBOR plus a half a percent. Remember, LIBOR can change. LIBOR can, you know, be if it's 6%, then this would be 6.5%. If it's 9%, it would be 9.5%. Now, what do the cash flows look like? What are the, what are the exchange of cash flows? We said that triple B was paying the bank 12 and a quarter percent. The bank was funneling 12% to A. So essentially, all of A's fixed rate, fixed interest rate of 12% is covered. They're paying 12%, they're receiving 12%, so they're not paying any fixed rate here. They've gotten rid of that. Triple A is going to pay the bank the LIBOR rate, okay, that floating rate. Could be 6%, might go up to 7.5%, they pass it on to the bank. So essentially what Triple A has done here is converted this 12% loan, fixed rate loan, into a floating rate loan at a rate of LIBOR. The bank here is going to pass the LIBOR on to triple B. So now B is paying LIBOR plus a half a percent, but they're receiving LIBOR. So this cancels. So if LIBOR goes from 6% to 8%, it doesn't matter because what they receive goes up and that'll cover the extra cost here. So they're essentially paying half a percent. They're, they've decide, they're paying the bank 12 and a quarter percent, and they're also paying a half a percent here. Remember, the LIBOR cancels. So they're paying 12 and three quarter percent for their loan. The bank, on the other hand, gets LIBOR, passes LIBOR on, but gets 12 and a quarter percent and only passes 12 percent on, so they're keeping a quarter percent. So let's summarize the results here. Okay. As I said before, AAA pays the bank LIBOR for the floating rate loan. The bank passes the money on to triple B. Let's see what we get here. AAA gets a short term or a floating rate loan at LIBOR. And so instead of paying LIBOR plus a quarter percent, they only pay LIBOR, they save a quarter percent. Triple B gets the long term loan at 12 and a quarter percent plus the half a percent they pay on LIBOR. So they're getting it at 12 and three quarter percent or 12.75 percent and it saves them a quarter percent and in the example we gave here the bank keeps a quarter percent so everybody is a quarter percent better off the bank earns a quarter percent triple B borrows long term at a quarter percent less and triple A borrows long term at uh, I'm sorry short term at the LIBOR rate which is a quarter percent less than they would pay now, it doesn't have to be divided evenly like this. This just makes for an easier example. And we could do it without an intermediary, in which case there would be another quarter percent that AAA and triple B could share. AAA being the stronger party might get all of that. So B might be a quarter percent better off. A might be um, actually half a percent better off. So in any case, you know, there, this swap allows both AAA and triple B to benefit. So swaps are a great way for you know financial institutions to reduce interest rate risk, okay, and to convert you know long-term loans to short-term rates and vice versa.